You're watching Taste of Victory. Hey guys, let's start the brand new Booster Set 7 meta off right with one of the strongest decks in the Japanese meta and one of two most anticipated decks here in North America, that is Blue Hybrids. So, the ban list will be going in effect for us February 25th, which will limit um, Ice Wall to 1 and then put Mega Digimon Fusion to 0. So that will change drastically how this deck looks compared to previous builds if you try to look up Japanese results. First notable th difference here is that Ice Wall is going to 1 because this card was way too powerful and stalled out games way too long. Also, Mega Digimon Fusion is completely banned. Previously, you would also run Analog Youth in this deck and then, um, you know, you're able to play Mega Digimon Fusion off that, go into Susanomon for only one memory, and often that will win you the game from 3 security. So that is way too busted, it's why it's gone. Um, I do think there is merit to at least running one Susanomon still, just for its effect, where it returns all your hybrids and tamers into the deck to keep you from decking out. That's a really powerful option still, kind of worth going into it for the full 7 memory. So if you have Susanomon or you think this deck needs it, yeah, absolutely consider running it at 1 if you still want to make room for it. But instead, I think what we do now to cope for the ban list getting rid of that is to just further enhance the stunning ability of this deck. And if you are interested in getting any of these cards that you need for Booster Set 7, I do have a TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. Thank you for supporting the channel. And thank you so much for 3,000 subscribers, everyone. It means a lot. So let's go ahead and start with this core package right here of new cards introduced. This is going to be the heart and soul of your deck. The Kumamon, Kori Kakumon, Beowulfmon, and Tommy package. These four cards are basically like the heart and soul combo of the deck. Let's go ahead and start with Tommy. He is 3 to play. He has the security effect like any other tamer to play itself for free from security, except it's at the main half of the text box instead of in the inheritable. But his on play effect is trash 3 Digivolution cards from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. A gimmick in this set, he has an inheritable now, so when attacking once per turn until the end of your opponent's next turn, one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards can attack or block which is really powerful and heritable because we now have many hybrids that will digivolve over tamers. One of the main tamers you want to be digivolving is going to be Tommy for that ability, that inheritable, to stun a bunch of opponents Digimon. So normally what you're going to do is you're going to play this if you're going second, you know, or really whenever. You're going to play this, hopefully you put them at a low enough memory threshold so they can only really digivolve up once. You already trashed Digivolution, three Digivolution cards from the bottom of one of your opponents Digimon. So let's say like Champion or Ultimate, they're already sourceless. If you put them at low enough memory and they don't have a memory tamer, they're going to likely only be able to digivolve up one. You will then um, go into Kumamon, who will strip that one extra source, and now you'll be able to stun them. So if we read Kumamon, he is two to digivolve normally, but his effect also lets him digivolve over a tamer as if it were a level three blue Digimon. And then when digivolving, trash one Digivolution card from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. So if the scenario comes up like I was describing, where you only have your opponent only has one source left, this discards the last one, you can then swing into something else or whatever, and then the inheritable off of Tommy will now have that Digimon stunned so they can't retaliate back with that. And then also, if you want to consider Kori Kakuban, he also uh, lets you digivolve over a tamer as if it were a level 3 blue Digimon for a cost of 2. Otherwise, it would be three. And then he could Digivolve over a level four as well for only one memory. And then he has one Digivolving. If a card with hybrid and its traits or Tommy is in this Digimon's Digivolution cards, one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards can attack or block until the end of your next turn. So this is a when Digivolving stun. So when Digivolving, you can already stun something. You know, you could go over Tommy for one memory, stun something. And then at 6,000 DP, which is a great threshold in this meta, you could swing and then stun something else with Tommy off of his Inheritable. So that's a really powerful combo that lets you stun a lot of Digimon in one turn. So if they're trying to go wide or if they had like a mid-sized board, it's going to stun a lot, if not all of it, which is really frustrating for them to try and play back and respond to your stuff when they're getting all their Digimon stunned. But then we also have Beowulfmon to round out that comp, that little flow, you know. And then its effects are, when your Digimon ha that has a Tamer card in its Digivolution cards digivolves into this card in your hand, reduce the Digivolution cost by 2. So this is now also a 1 cost Digivolution if you're Digivolving over something that has a Tamer in its sources. That's huge, all off of bat, right off the bat. But then when attacking, you may return one Digimon card with hybrid in its traits from this Digimon's Digivolution cards to, re to your hand to return one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon cards to its owner's hand. So now, you also have bounce. You're not just stunning stuff now, you know, you can also bounce and remove stuff like a blocker since it's at the level 4 or lower level. But you see, that cost to do it, you know, to return a card from its sources is not 
a, a deterrent or a hindrance at all because you are now also returning on top of bouncing one of your opponent's Digimon, you're also now returning a Kori Kakumon or a Kumamon to do it all over again. Digivolve over another Tommy or any other Tamer, or Digivolve over another level 4 that you have out or level 3 like Kori Kakumon and stun something else again off of its effect. So that ability to recycle these stuns and do it again next turn is insane. This little package of 4 cards right here is really powerful and really frustrating to play against. If we start looking at the rest of the deck, we, the whole entire basis of it is supporting that. So we have Upamon, really easy uh, plus one draw for low investment, fantastic egg. Then we got the starter deck, Demi Vimon. We draw or search a lot in this deck and we Digivolve a lot. So we're often gonna have eight cards in hand so that it's really easy to hit that plus 1000 DP in a color that doesn't have a lot of DP boost. And after that, we go to our rookies. We got old Strabimon. This thing has been in the game since 1.5. It's really great for searching the cards you need in this deck because it grabs potentially two things. On play, reveal the top three cards of your deck, add one hybrid Digimon card and one blue Tamer card among them, and you bottom the rest. So that's really powerful and potentially huge value, which helps fuel your Demi Vimon as well and lets you get what you're missing. So fantastic. Also, it's a hybrid. Level three hybrids are huge. Next up, we got another Strabimon. Basically, our entire bottom end is Strabimon. So that's really funny. But that's because it's all hybrids and we need those rookie hybrids for effects. After, uh, so Strabimon has the Inheritable. When attacking, what's per turn? If this Digimon has hybrid form or 10 warriors in its types, gain one memory. So if you're Digivolving over this off of your guys or whatever, like your little level four hybrids, you get um, a plus memory off of that. And then you also synergize with your Magna Garumon, which we'll get to soon. So that extra memory is great. After that, the newest Strabimon, which is coming in this set. On play, reveal the top four cards of your deck and add one card with hybrid in its traits, Susanomon or Koji among them to your hand. So you do have a way to search Susanomon, which I do think is worth running at one because you do even have a way to search it out. This is more ways to get your hybrids, more ways to get Koji. So it's a lot of good consistency options in this deck to search. After that, we got Pokemon. So Pokemon is definitely the outlier in this deck because you can't Digivolve into it or over it. But that doesn't matter with how insanely busted this card is. Just read this. Three to play, 2000 DP. On play, reveal five cards from the top of your deck. Add one card with hybrid in its form or ten warriors in its type and one timber card among them to your hand. Place the remaining at the bottom of your deck in any order. So yet another more ways to search your hybrids, your ten warriors. Fantastic off of that alone. But also, your turn once per turn when your timer digivolves, gain two memory. That's insane. So whenever you digivolve over any of these guys, uh, any of these guys into your tamers, you gain two memories. So off of, you know, Kumamon, if you have Pokemon out, that's free. So not only do you have this insane stun ability, you know, you're also getting it for free value. It's insane. It, it's crazy. And you also got Kori Kakumon, they can digivolve over tamers and all this other stuff. So Pokemon is really fantastic. And if you stack them out, it, it stacks. So it adds up really fast it's really huge value pokemon is an amazing utility option and then you can chip with this once you once it's done its job you know and giving you all that memory and then your opponent has to sacrifice a swing that could be at security or at one of your better digimon and try to get rid of this guy so they don't get so much value so bakuman is amazing for that next up we got beowulf on amazing he's a hybrid so we're gonna run it because he digivolves all retamers we already went over that package so then we could go to the boss Magna Garurumon. So honestly, a lot of the times you are going to be stunning and chipping with your low ends and that's going to be doing a bunch of the work because it makes it really frustrating for your opponent to be able to even respond to them. You know, these guys are going to stick on board a lot if they're surviving the security checks. But Magna Garurumon is still a great option to push for game and to really push your control as far as you can take it because he has when digivolving and when attacking. So you can uh, trigger both of these. These are both triggers of when they would go off. So you can choose there. He has four to digivolve from a level five. And then once per turn, you may return one Digimon card with hybrid in its form from this Digimon's Digivolution cards to your hand to return one of your opponent's Digimon card with the same level as that card to its owner's hand. And then your turn, once per turn, when your hand is increased by an effect, unsuspend one of your Digimon. So this is a really great versatile effect off of Magna Garurumon right here. So um, this pairs with Koji, which we'll read next, because Koji has a uh, you know, normal security effect, but then also main. Once per turn, you may place five cards with hybrid in their form from your hand under this tamer in any order to digivolve it into a Magna Garurumon in your hand, where its digivolution cost as if this is a tamer is a level five as if this tamer is a level five blue Digimon. 
So you can choose to put a second Magna Gururumon underneath that stack, and then with Magna Gururumon's when did you evolving slash attacking effect, you can return the Magna Gururumon and then bounce a level six. So that's really great powerful removal. And then Koji also has an inheritable effect that synergizes with Magna Gururumon's main effect because it has the inheritable once return when an effect adds a card to your hand, gain one memory, then this Digimon can't be blocked for the turn. So you could use this uh, when digivolving effect right away when digivolving, making this a three cost off of Koji since that does trigger. Because typically what you want to do is you don't want to do this effect on digivolution. You want to wait it out and do it when attacking. So you could digivolve, not activate the effect, swing, and then activate it, giving yourself the unsuspend. But you know, whatever, if for whatever reason you need to go into it this turn and it needs to be three memory, you know, you could do it on digivolving and reduce the cost like that. But yeah, this is really amazing because you can basically choose to bounce anything at any level that's giving you trouble. You get a lot of synergy with your other effects that increase hand size for your, like your lower Demi Vimon, your uh, Koji, because you're getting that extra memory. And then also you're able to unspend and get an extra swing. So you're able to do more chips that way with a nice 12,000 DP body. Um, so it's really powerful in that regard to further the control aspect of this deck. And because we are giving up that Susanamon package with the ban list, you're able to fit more room for this card, which a lot of lists previously did not run because Susanamon was your boss monster. After that, we got Starlight Velocity, one of the coping mechanisms now that we've lost Susanomon. It is three to play, really powerful option because it has main effect. You may play one Tamer card or one Digimon card with hybrid in its traits from one of your Digimon Digivolution cards as a Tamer or another Digimon without paying its memory cost. So this is really cool to be able to play out the sources underneath your Magnet Garurumon after you got into Koji. And like even before that, it's still great value. So let's say you do stack a second Magna Garurumon underneath it off of Koji's effect. You, let's say you don't need to bounce a level 6 or you bounce a level 5 or something like that off of its effect. You can still now use Starlight Velocity to get a second one out and that's really really cool. Also you can just play a Beowulf Mon and then Digivolve into another Magna Garurumon you may have in your hand and be able to do the bounce a level 5 stuff all over again. You're getting ready to do that for next turn. So that's a really good versatile option. I think this really helps further your control ability and recycling to not have to worry about seeing something all the time. The security effect is really good too because it has, you may play one Koji from your hand or trash without paying its memory cost. So for whatever reason, maybe it was milled away or you know it was removed somehow. You can play this if you reveal it of security, you can play it off your trash. And free value of your tamers is always huge in this meta because like you want to get as many as you can on board, which is why you see we are running so many. So many. Ice Wall is Ice Wall. After the uh, Digimon Nationals Finals, I don't think we need to explain why it's so good. It just buys you so much time. If we could run this at four, we would. After that, we got Davis. He started off your turn. He guarantees you three memory if you are at less than three. And then he also helps you search your cards from the top of your deck. Really great to be able to search and dig into more stuff. And then being able to guarantee the memory for big plays is huge. Then we got Sora and Joe. So Sora and Joe helps the deck strategy by help stripping sources. It is also for to play. Start of your turn. If a Digimon has no Digivolution cards, gain two memory, which will be a very easy condition for this deck to meet. And the plus two memory will be stacking with Davis. So you could easily go to five, uh, seven if you have multiple of these out. It's really strong like that. And then your turn, when one of your blue Digimon attacks, you may suspend this Tamers to trash the bottom two Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon. So it's more great utility to discard sources. Uh, we already went over our new Tamers, Tommy and Koji. So that is going to be the package for blue hybrids. This is a really strong, consistent, powerful deck. It has definitely gone down a peg after losing uh, Susanomon, but that just brings it back into like a fair fair level you know that other decks can actually compete in it's not bad by any means it's still one of the i think gonna be one of the best decks in the format still it's just now actually has to play the game instead of just beating you right away so there's definitely some text you could uh, play around with this you know no no youtuber list is ever a solid end all be all definitely experiment so for example you could definitely cut down on some of these tamers like uh, Sora Cho and Koji because Koji's really kind of just like a finishing maneuver to try and push your game or a desperation removal if you have to get rid of a level six kind of quickly so you could absolutely justify dropping this to two and then if you worry you, you might need more memory gain you could drop into Howling Mem Boost because this helps your strategy just like um, Sora Cho does you know it strips it stuns it plays perfectly into the strategy and then you also get to delay it later for two extra memory. You can do that, or you can run some Hammer Sparks in its place there as well. So there's definitely room to play uh, with this deck like that. So that's going to be the list. It's really powerful, kind of annoying to play against, consistent. I really like it. This is definitely one of the more baseline lists you'll be seeing. Uh, there's definitely more experiments and stuff you could do, a more greedy list, and for sure experiment with them. 
Let me know if you try this and how it treats you, you know, and if you make any other changes, let me know what you put in your build. Thanks for watching. I hope this is really helpful for you guys. And until the next video, remember to stay hungry until you get a taste of victory. Thank you.